Hi, this is problem F2-3, Engineering Mechanics Statics for Hepler 14 edition. Uh, this problem asks us to determine the magnitude of the resultant force and its direction measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. So we are asked to find the resultant force counterclockwise counterclockwise from the positive axis. In this problem we have a screw eye and two ropes. One rope is pulled at, at a 600 Newton at a 30 degree angle from the x-axis and the second rope is pulled at, at, a, at a force of 800 Newton at a 90 degree angle from the x-axis. So the first thing that you should do is to draw a free body diagram. So where we draw the x, the y axis, and we and and we draw a 600 newton magnitude at a direction of 30 degree, an 800 newton vector. at a 90 degree let's call this one our f1 vector you can call this vector whatever you want and let's call this to be f2 vector all right in chapter 2 it focuses on implementing and using the parallel law where you can use this law to illustrate uh, the triangle head to tail uh, addition of components so in these problems in chapter 2 we will focus on using the met the parallelogram method so in in this um, uh, free body diagram we will draw a parallelogram parallelogram where we gonna have a uh, parallel uh, sides so uh, this side is parallel to this side and they have the same direction the length of this side is the same as the length of this side so these two parallel lines the same thing for F1 is parallel. Sorry. This line is also parallel to this line. They have the same direction and they have the same length. So these green line are parallel are the parallel lines. And where these parallel lines intersect at this point let's call this point B we will draw from the origin to point B our resultant force all right another reason why we do the parallelogram because we can use the proper the geometric properties of parallelogram uh, to find out angles that will help us find the length of the resultant force and the direction of the um, uh, and, and the direction of the resultant force uh, speaking of the uh, direction of the resultant force we know that the direction of the resultant force will be this counterclockwise from the positive x-axis and I decide to call this angle theta you can call this angle whatever you want so now we will use the head to tail fashion where, uh, where as you can see we will we added f2 to vector f1 where we place the the tail of f1 vector on the head of f2 vector And here we have our re resultant force. All right. So now we will find angles and sides 
in order to help us to find the resultant force. All right, so we know that F2 is 800 Newton. F1 is 600 Newton. Uh, all right, so we know that this here is 90 degree. So, uh, so uh, 30 minus uh, 90 minus 30 will give you. So this angle will be 60 degree. One of the properties of a parallelogram: opposite sides. Oh, sorry, opposite angles are congruent. So this angle have the same measure as this angle so this is 60 this is 60 so this angle will have the same angle as this one so opposite angles are congruent are the same so this is so this is the first thing all right we can solve for r since we have two sides and the angle between them we can use the cosine law to find the resultant all right but before we jump to that let's see if we can find other angles in this parallelogram one of the geometric properties of parallelogram is the interior angles of a parallelogram is 360 degree 360 degree minus so we have uh, so so that can help us find the remaining two angles so 60 plus 60 is 120 degree and that will give us 240 degree uh, as as i said before opposite angles are congruent so the, the 240 is the sum of these two angles. So 240 divided by 2 will give you 120 degree. So this will be 120 degree, 120 degree. All right. So now we can find... All right. So now we said that the angle, this angle here, is 30 right and we said this angle here is theta now what we want to do is we want to find now we want to find this angle this angle let's call it um, alpha so in this case alpha will equal to so the, this whole angle is 120 degree minus 30 degree angle plus alpha. That will give you the uh, theta. So theta will equal to 120 degree minus 30 degree minus theta so alpha will equal to 90 degree minus theta all right so we, now we find this angle on the other side we want to find this angle So this angle, let's call it gamma. So gamma will. E so we know that the sum of the uh, the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degree. So we will say 180 degree minus so 60 degree plus alpha so gamma will equal to 180 degree minus 60 degree minus alpha so alpha will equal to 180 minus 60 is 120 
degree minus alpha. Now, we want to rewrite these two angles in terms of theta because theta is the angle that we want to find. So we will re replace alpha with 90 degree minus alpha, not minus theta, sorry. So gamma will equal to 120 degree minus 90 degree minus theta. So gamma will equal to 120 degree minus 90 degree plus theta. So that will give us gamma will equal to 30 plus theta. All right, so we we found these two angles, the alpha, the gamma, and the alpha, in terms of theta. So now let's. So now what we will do is we'll. So here we will redraw half portion of a circle to uh, illustrate the uh, head to tail addition and to rear and, and to write if all our knowns in here and unknowns. So we know that this is 600 Newton. This is 800 Newton. The angle between them is 60 degree. This angle is alpha and this angle is gamma. And, and this is our resultant force that, that we need to find. And, and we already know uh, and, 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 and we know here and from here, the uh, alpha and gamma written in terms of theta. All right, to find the resultant force, we will use the cosine law. Cosine law. So the cosine law, we will have the resultant force, square root. So it will be uh, the cosine law a square plus b square minus 2ab times cosine of the angle between the two sides and you can choose a and b to be whatever you want you can choose a to be it's it's 800 or b or a b 600 so let's say 800 squared uh, plus 600 squared minus 2 times 800 times 600 times cosine the angle between them is 60 degree when you plug this into your calculator the answer will be 721.11 let's make it 721 Newton All right, so now this is our resultant force. Now we are also asked, we need to find the direction, the theta. So we will use the sine law. Now we use the sine law to find unknown angles. In our case, when we want to find angles, it is best to, uh, uh, to uh, switch uh, the denominator and the numerator. So the sine law says a over sine of the angle opposite to a. In our case, we will flip it and make it sine over a. So we will say that sine 60 degree divided by the resultant force uh, 721 equal to um, sine of alpha but let's rewrite alpha in terms of um, in terms of, um, of of theta so it will be 90 minus theta divided by uh, a, the opposite side is 600 Newton equal to sine of gamma and gamma we will rewrite it in terms of 
theta, which is 30 plus theta, divided by 800. You can choose any of the any of the two combination. Let's choose these two. So we can solve for uh, sine theta. Uh, so, so, so we can so we can solve for theta. So in in your calculator, sine 60 divided by 721, and we move the 600 to the other side, and multiply it by 600. It will give you sine 90 degree minus theta equal to. Let, let's write it sine 60 degree divided by 721 Newton times 600 Newton and that will give you 0 0.72 so let's solve for for this 90 degree minus theta equal to the inverse sine of 0 0.72 you plug this into your calculator so that will give you 90 degree minus theta equal to uh, 46.11 and we can solve for theta so theta will be when you rearrange it and and plug it in your calculator it will give you 43.9 degree all right so the angle is 43.9 degree and the resultant magnitude is 721 degree. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a nice day.